Okay, so in this video, I'm going to compare passive versus active transport and look at examples of each. So our first type of transport we're going to talk about is diffusion. So in diffusion, this is one of the simple way that ways that molecules can enter or leave a cell. So we want to remember from our cell membrane video that the cell membrane center is nonpolar. So therefore, other nonpolar molecules like oxygen or carbon dioxide or even lipid-based hormones can pass right on through that cell membrane. It's also important to remember that molecules are in constant motion and they're always moving and colliding with each other. So here we have a cell with a high concentration of oxygen on the outside of the cell. Maybe the person just took a big deep breath like, and now there's a high concentration of oxygen on the outside and a lower concentration on the inside. Oxygen, luckily, is nonpolar. And therefore, as these oxygen molecules are colliding with each other, they are able to pass right on through the membrane. So let's go ahead and watch. So as oxygen molecules are moving and just part of their natural movement and motion, they happen to cross the membrane. Now it's important to realize that these oxygen molecules do not want to get to the low concentration, but due to random movement, they happen to have what appears is to be a movement inside the cell. And that's really just because you started with so many on the outside that given time, they're gonna collide and spread out until what's called equilibrium is reached. And now you would have like an equal concentration of oxygen on both sides. So really, I'm sorry, I should have like these, um, at this point, it's not a low or a high concentration. Eventually you would reach equilibrium. Also, the molecules would not stop moving. They would be moving up and down through that membrane just at equal rates. Um, so it would be in equilibrium, basically. Okay, so let me uh, turn off this pen. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, um, sorry. Okay. So let's go ahead though and look at this. So it says when small nonpolar molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration, this is called diffusion. But it's important to realize that they are doing it um, just based on random collisions and the fact that they can just cross through that lipid bilayer. So they are moving from high to low concentration due to random collisions. They're not forced or pumped or pushed through that membrane. They don't want to get to a lower concentration. They're just randomly colliding and happen to spread out until an equilibrium is reached. And there's no energy required. We never mentioned energy or ATP at all in simple diffusion. Okay, cool. So now let's look at another type of diffusion called facilitated diffusion. Because while oxygen was nonpolar and could cross right through that lipid bilayer, no problem, without resistance, that's not true for every kind of molecule. Like ions, for example, or polar molecules. If an, a molecule is ion or polar, they get blocked by this nonpolar fatty acid center. So where you see those little tails right there, that will like repel ions or repel polar molecules. So as I play this animation, pay attention to the sodium. Ooh, we also see something new. So in the middle of this membrane, we have a protein channel. So within our cell membranes, we have proteins and they have a number of different functions. They could be receptors, they could be enzymes, um, they could be used for identification along with carbohydrates. But here we have a protein channel. So let's watch what happens with these sodium. So you notice on the outside of the cell, you have a high concentration of sodium. And on the inside of the cell, we have a low concentration of sodium. So now look how the sodium does not just go by simple diffusion through that lipid bilayer. Rather, the only way they can actually get to the other side of the cell is through that protein channel. So let's play it again. Look, they never actually cross through that black and yellow area. The only way they can move from a high to low concentration is through the protein channel. So this also is true for like larger polar molecules like glucose. 
So glucose is a large sugar molecule that is polar, so it can't go by simple diffusion through the fatty acid layer. Instead, they also move from high concentration to low concentration, but through a protein channel. So when we talk about facil oh, there's another one. As we talk about facilitated diffusion, it is still moving from high concentration to low concentration due to random collisions. However, the molecules are not able to cross that nonpolar center. They either have charges or they're too large or polar, and therefore they um, have to go through a protein channel. So they're not forced, they're not pumped, they're not pushed through them, through the protein channels, but that's the only way they can get through to the other side, whether it's into the cell or out of the cell. And there's no energy required in facilitated diffusion. Facilitate means to help. So it's still diffusion, but just with a helper. And that helper is a protein. Okay, so it's just like diffusion, except for the molecules cannot pass right through the membrane, uh, that nonpolar part, and therefore they have a specific protein channel that they use to enter or leave a cell. So while I used uh, glucose and sodium, and I use the same like blue protein, that wouldn't be true in real life. Like the glucose would have its own glucose transporter protein. The sodium would have its own sodium protein channel. Each protein channel is very specific for the ion or molecule that it transports. Now, some of you though might be thinking, wow, she mentioned that polar molecules need a protein channel, but I thought water was polar, right? And I also thought that osmosis was the diffusion of water. So if water is polar, how does water enter and leave a cell by diffusion, right? So when we look at osmosis, osmosis is the diffusion of water. The water is polar. So you will have a few water molecules that can squeak through the lipid bilayer, but there are actually special proteins that allow water molecules to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So in this example, the water is high on the inside of the cell and low on the outside. So you notice there's a little protein that's going to help uh, give like a, a doorway or a passage for the water molecules. And we call that protein an aquaporin. So the specialized proteins that allow for water to move from high to low concentrations, those are called aquaporins. So this picture I thought was kind of cool because it shows you might have a few water molecules in that fatty acid region, but the majority are going to enter through a protein channel called an aquaporin. So osmosis is the diffusion of water still moving from high to low concentration with no energy required. Uh, but we will have a whole separate video on osmosis because water balance in cells is so critically important to the survival of organisms. It deserves its own video. Okay, uh, so now, oops, let's go, that was a little fast, huh? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our last type of transport called active transport. So, and you can think about it with the name active, you're like, hmm, that sounds like it might use energy. So now let's look at this cell. And here we have a high concentration of calcium within the cell and a low concentration of calcium outside of the cell. Now, though, let's pretend that, oh, we don't even have to pretend. Sometimes in cells, they may have a high concentration of ions, but maybe they need more, right? Maybe it's not enough. And therefore, the molecules would have to go from a low concentration to a high concentration. Like, how do we make that happen? That's not going to happen just due to random collisions. This is where energy is required. So the energy in a cell is called ATP. And what you notice here is ATP is required to pump that calcium in. Notice I used the word pump. Uh, think about any time you've had to like pump up a bike tire or pump up a car tire. I don't really know, but uh, pump up a soccer ball. Like that, you're forcing air already where there's a lot of it under high pressure. It's gonna take energy, right? It's uh, going from where there's less air outside and you're forcing it into the soccer ball or into the bike tire, so it's under a lot of pressure. So I use the word pump on purpose because it's like forcing the calcium already to where there's a lot of it. So ATP, when it's used as a source of energy, it actually will be broken down or hydrolyzed into ADP and an inorganic phosphate. 
So we require ATP in order to pump that calcium from a low concentration to a high concentration. And we call this active transport. So active transport is moving from low concentrations to high concentrations. Uh, they are pumped through a protein channel and they do require energy. This is where energy is required to get those molecules to move to a particular destination. So if we compare passive versus active transport. Passive transport does not require any energy and the molecules are moving from a high concentration to low concentration. It's due to random collisions and the moving. Now, if it's simple diffusion, it'll pass right on through the membrane. If it's osmosis, it'll pass some through the membrane, some through aquaporins. And if it's facilitated diffusion, they'll pass through a protein channel. Now, active transport is the opposite. It does require energy, and the molecules are moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. So again, passive transport, no energy. Active transport, yes, energy, as well as the concentration gradients are different in both. Now, when we look at uh, the term selectively permeable, sometimes it's called that the cell membrane is selectively permeable or it controls what enters or leaves a cell, it regulates what can enter or leave. It's phrased a number of different ways, but when we say selectively permeable or semi-permeable, we mean that some things can cross and other things can't. So in our video, oxygen can cross, carbon dioxide can cross, nonpolar molecules can cross, but things like ions or glucose or polar molecules can't simply cross by diffusion. They need particular protein channels. So therefore the cell can regulate what can enter or leave. And that is my video on membrane transport. I hope it was helpful. Good job.